This DVD has been produced as an aid to coaches and riders alike. It will be an aid for coaches working towards qualifications and can act as a reminder for experienced coaches. It can be used in conjunction with the British Show Jumping written coach resource and can provide riders with a clear visual image for movements on the flat. This first clip shows the two correct lines of riding. Firstly, shoulder, hip, heel, and the second, elbow, hand, bit. These help create a balanced position and a soft feeling hand contact. Both of these lines we try to maintain throughout our riding. The first series of clips show the rider position at walk, trot, and canter in the three-point seat. This shows the rider on the left in the mid seat and on the right in the two point seat. Only a slight difference is necessary. Notice the rider is looking forward with the rein contact level and a good weight into the lower leg and heel, allowing for a light seat. In the two point, the rider is in a good central position, looking ahead, hands carried. The rider has an even weight down through the lower leg into a soft ankle and a secure heel position. The seat remains light with the upper body in balance. The hands should be level and not too wide apart, slightly upright with a thumb on top and an even length on the rein. The shoulders should also be level and relaxed, with a soft elbow which should be close to the body, allowing the rider to follow the movement of the horse smoothly and to apply the rein aids almost without trace. The rider on the left is sitting correctly in balance. The rider on the right is sitting crooked. Can you see how the head is facing slightly right, taking this crookedness through the shoulder with the elbows and the toes sticking out? This will lead to a collapsed hip and tightness in the thigh and lower leg, with more weight going into the right stirrup. View the rider position and comment. Did you notice the rider putting more weight into the right stirrup, collapsing the left hip with the right shoulder lower and her head needing to go to the left to help with her balance? This has an immediate effect on the straightness of the horse. This halt shows how the rider is sitting behind the movement, with no lower leg contact, raising the heel and gripping with the thigh, becoming heavy in the seat, firm with the hand, all leading to a sudden blocked feel to the horse and an uncomfortable halt. Due to this loss of balance, the rider finished by tipping forward and looking down. This halt shows a good rider position. Sometimes when teaching halt, you need to indicate to the horse the transition coming up 
and a still yet softening feel on the inside rein with three little checks on the outside rein prior to the halt will allow the horse to prepare for a firmer hold into the rein without too much evasion. Think tall through your body, lightening the seat slightly with a soft lower leg contact to maintain straightness. You can see that the rider allows the horse to level up a little better, standing engaged, motionless and attentive. Here we see the free walk, showing the neck extending but not really stretching down. Extended walk and particularly the free walk is often overlooked by riders, reasons being time, sharpness of horse, control etc. But is something that needs to be used regularly throughout the lesson to allow the horse to stretch his muscles and relax between controlled exercises. Try to achieve this in both your warming up and cooling down routines. This clip shows the benefit of the long rein to the horse when given between exercises. You can see the horse now looking down into the rein while still having a little contact, lifting the back and walking through from the hind leg with good shoulder extension. Also you can see with this horse how it would help to develop the top line. The free walk allows complete freedom to lower and stretch out the neck, relaxing the contact on the horse's mouth. When watching these clips, please observe the rider's position, working on the correct diagonal and changing it when changing direction, how she's looking where she's going and around the turns. By looking and thinking ahead, this enables her body position to allow the horse to look also while still remaining in balance. The horse should adjust the bend through his body to follow the contour of the line he is following. At times the head is a little unsteady, but it is on the whole good. This transition from trot to walk benefited from the rider sitting. This allowed a softer seat, leg contact helped with the rhythm and straightness, and using the same soft inside rein and three little checks through the outside, the horse remained soft yet forward through the transition. Better rein contact in the walk allowed the hind leg to remain more engaged and the transition to trot then more active and correct. Notice the rider's shoulder position around the turns. This allows the horse to move around the turns in balance. At all times the rider is sitting in the middle of the saddle with an even weight down into the stirrups. At times you may see a rider slipping their weight to the outside or inside on a turn. This you need to address. Look and check their saddles and also their posture. You could work them without stirrups to see how they sit naturally and discover their feel for their own position. This may need the involvement of a human physio. Moving the trot forward and collecting improves engagement of hocks enabling the horse to sit more in balance on the hind leg and becoming lighter on the forehand, achieving an even rein contact. 
The stillness in the rein and the head carriage is achieved through the horse being in balance and the hind leg being engaged yet active. To aid with balance, the half halt is used. It should be hardly visible. It is the action of the seat a little deeper, the leg a little more contact, and the increase in the rein contact. This increases the balance, activity, and attention from the horse. The first clip shows 10 strides in a three-point seat in quite a collected canter. The hindquarter is engaged and the forehand is light and mobile. The second clip shows almost a medium canter with seven strides. To do this, the rider is in two-point seat. The horse finds this a little harder and is trying to extend his nose forward too much. Introducing a circle halfway to improve balance may help with this. This three-point seat nine-stride distance shows the horse slightly against the rider's hand, but good rhythm is maintained. This highlights the stiffness over the back of the horse. Seven strides. Here you can see the horse is very much on the forehand, leaning on the rider's hand, pulling her body forward. Again, adding a stride would help with the balance and suppleness over his back on this rein needs to be worked on. This last exercise is good for making the rider aware of how to increase and collect the canter in both two and three point seats on both reins without evasion. This right rein shows the rider entering in three point seat in a nice collected canter, changing to two point and opening up the canter slightly. We are riding the leg yield firstly along the wall. This is sometimes easier to explain to a rider and achieves a better result that the rider can feel and understand before taking it across the diagonal. The horse should move away from the touch of the leg but remain relatively straight in his body. You will see a slight flexion at the pole to the inside away from the direction of the movement. The inside hind steps forward and across in front of the outside hind. The outside fore steps forward and the regularity of the steps should be maintained.
The rider is sitting to the inside but not leaning her upper body. Shorten the inside rein so that the elbow does not come behind the hip, with the shoulders upright yet relaxed. This stops the rider crossing the hand over the wither. The rider is sitting to the inside but not leaning her upper body. Shorten the inside rein so that the elbow does not come behind the hip with the shoulders upright yet relaxed. This stops the rider crossing the hand over the wither. It must remain soft and encourage soft flexion into the bend. The outside rein balances and limits the bend at the base of the neck. The outside leg is just on the girth with the rider looking forward. Open the inside hip and touch the inside leg just behind the girth without lifting and pulling the heel back, allowing the knee to come away slightly from the saddle. You will now see leg yielding across the diagonal. Be aware the quarters must not overtake the shoulder and the trot work has been done sitting with this young horse to help maintain better rhythm and balance. The leg yielding is designed to teach the rider to feel the horse and to show the rider how to influence the positioning of the horse's head, neck and body. Practice it equally on both reins. The horse should move away from the touch of the leg but remain relatively straight in his body. You will see a slight flexion at the pole to the inside away from the direction of the movement. The inside hind steps forward and across in front of the outside hind. The outside fore steps forward and the regularity of the steps should be maintained. Shoulder in is an invaluable exercise against shying and increases the horse's suppleness and handiness, advancing his education. Practice shoulder in equally off both reins. This exercise encourages the horse to bring the inside hind leg forward and under the body slightly, closer to his centre of gravity. This puts more weight towards the hind legs, therefore improving his balance. 
The main difference between leg yielding and shoulder in is the bend around the inside leg required in the shoulder in compared to the straightness required in the leg yielding. As the name suggests, it is the positioning of the horse's shoulder on the inside track. The horse offers the softness to the inside and is therefore bent around the rider's inside leg. The head should not tilt at the pole and the degree of bend should be approximately the same as for a six metre circle. When introducing shoulder in, ask firstly of a 10 metre circle with about six to 10 strides of shoulder in. Then move back onto a 10 metre circle and repeat the movement. Returning to a circle allows the hock action and rhythm to re-establish. Keep rider's weight to the inside. Look ahead. Shorten the inside rein so that the horse flexes to the inside and the rider's elbow remains just in front of the hip. The outside rein allows so that the elbow remains just in front of the hip but neither loses contact nor restricts impulsion and engagement of the inside hind leg. In general, the inside hand should be kept just behind the outside hand. Open the inside hip to engage the inside hind, but keep an even contact with both legs so that a touch of the outside leg at the girth brings the forehand onto the inside track. Open the inside rein slightly away from the horse's neck, keeping a straight line to the horse's mouth. Bring the outside hand closer to the withers. Do not allow the horse to find support on this rein. It does, however, control pace and bend. Point the outside foot down the track. Keep rider's weight to the inside, look ahead. Shorten the inside rein so that the horse flexes to the inside. The outside rein allows so that the elbow remains just in front of the hip. The shoulders should be level in height with the outside shoulder placed slightly forward. Open the inside hip to engage the inside hind but keep an even contact with both legs so that a touch of the outside leg at the girth brings the forehand onto the inside track. Open the inside rein slightly away from the horse's neck, bring the outside hand closer to the withers and point the outside foot down the track. The left still shows the rider slipping to the left lifting the right heel up and back and taking the right hand over and across the wither, leading to too much neck bend and nose tilt right, with the horse pushing his body weight onto the left shoulder. The right still is correct. To recap, rider sitting with weight evenly in both stirrups coming off the corner. Open the inside rein so the horse is flexed to the right. Outside rein maintains contact. Outside leg on the girth. Inside leg one hand width behind the girth. The horse is then bent around the rider's inside leg. Maintain trot rhythm. Pivot turns. Turn about the hind quarters. This exercise teaches the horse to turn in response to the rider's position and outside leg instead of the rein. It improves balance on the turns and straightness by controlling his shoulder and carrying more weight towards the hind leg. 
It also teaches the horse to stretch into the outside rein contact when the outside foreleg steps across the body. This is an excellent movement to improve turns in a jump off where similar aids are needed. Rider sits tall with the weight to the inside. Shorten the inside rein to keep the horse flexed into the inside bend. As the rider asks the outside hind to leave the floor, a small half halt with the outside rein stops the horse stepping forward and encourages the inside hind leg to sit under whilst the outside hind crosses over and in front. The outside foreleg also crosses over and in front of the inside foreleg. To recap, rider sitting with the weight to the inside looking around the turn. Ask for inside flexion, inside leg on the girth, outside leg behind the girth with a half halt on the outside rein as the outside leg is put on. Travers, Ronvert and half pass. These movements are used to increase collection and freedom of the forehand, strengthen the load carrying muscles of the hind leg and teach the horse to open the inside foreleg and bring the outside hind leg under his body. With regards to show jumping, it increases strength, balance, collection and ease of ride. During the Travers, Ronvert and half pass, the horse is uniformly bent from pole to tail in the direction of the movement. The degree of bend is roughly for a six metre circle. This is a gymnastic exercise to improve the horse's length bend and suppleness. It confirms the horse's correct bend in the corners and turns, which is particularly useful when riding a course. The horse's shoulders and forelegs remain on the track facing the way it is going. Quarters are on an inside track with the outside hind leg immediately behind the inside foreleg so that it is on three tracks or a very slight fall. This is a gymnastic exercise to improve the horse's length bend and suppleness. It confirms the horse's correct bend and improves the rider's ability to position the horse, particularly useful riding dog legs, lines, etc., due to the fact that you are controlling the shoulder without the use of a wall. The horse's position in Ronvert is the same, but its shoulders and forelegs are positioned on an inside line with the quarters on the track. Usually ridden along the wall, it is easy to remember. Travers face the wall, Ronvert rear to the wall. Here we see the rider setting up the position to go into half pass off the right rein. Shorten the inside rein slightly. Coming off the corner, both horse and rider look across the diagonal. Flex the horse into the inside bend. Keep weight into the inside stirrup, leg at the girth, and take a half halt with the outside rein at the same time, apply the outside leg just behind the girth, keeping the heel down. 
It should coincide with the outside front leg coming forward. Do not ask for too much angle to start. The important part is the submission at the pole. Do not allow the nose or head to tilt. To recap, the rider and horse are looking into the direction they are travelling. The rider's weight is into the inside stirrup. The inside leg is on the girth, the outside leg is one hand's width behind the girth. The inside hand asks for flexion into the right bend and the outside hand maintains contact and rhythm whilst allowing correct bend. Here we see the rider finishing half past right, straightening the horse, changing her position and the horse's bend before left half pass. For the show jumper, the counter canter is used to improve balance and straightness of the canter, to develop the engagement of the inside hind leg and to improve self-carriage prior to teaching flying changes. The horse is asked to canter with the lead leg on the outside. Be clear in your position. For right lead, sit to the inside, i.e. on the side towards which the horse is flexed. Have an even weight in both your stirrups, with the right leg on the girth and the left leg slightly behind. Keep the right shoulder back. Have your hand position so that the right hand is slightly behind the left. Same height and not too wide apart, staying on the correct sides of the neck. Follow the line by directing the horse through the seat and leg rather than the rein. On left lead canter, shorten the left rein slightly so that the left hand is slightly behind the right. Keep the weight even. Left leg on the girth, right leg slightly behind the girth. Left hand remains soft and balancing when required. The right hand allows but does not lose position or feel and do not block the outside shoulder. If the horse feels tense, focus on your position and support the horse from a good lower leg position and maintain the correct bend. The left split shows the bend being lost and a flying change being produced due to the rider using hands and not lower leg and body position to ride the movement and the horse becoming unbalanced. Flying changes can be taught over a pole. This sometimes aids a young horse when teaching landing on the correct lead over a fence when jumping around a course. It also helps to produce a true change. 
Out of the right corner, proceed straight across the diagonal with the legs remaining in a slight inside leg on the girth, outside leg behind the girth position. Straighten the neck and then ask for new bend, left, into the change of direction and over the pole ask with the outside right leg to the girth, weight into the inside stirrup. In a correct flying change, the forelegs and hind legs change leads during the moment of suspension. Out of the left corner, come straight across the diagonal with the legs remaining in a slight inside leg on the girth, outside leg behind position. Straighten the neck and then ask for new bend, right, into the change of direction and over the pole ask with the outside leg, left leg, to the girth with the weight into your inside stirrup. Notice at all times during the changes the rider's upper body remains central, in balance and upright. Coming out of the bend, Proceed straight across the diagonal with the legs remaining in a slight inside leg on the girth, outside leg behind the girth position. Straighten the neck and then ask for new bend into the change of direction, keeping weight into the inside stirrup. Ask with the outside leg to the girth and ensure that the rider does not lean into the bend. To recap, Coming out of the bend, proceed straight across the diagonal with the legs remaining in a slight inside leg on the girth, outside leg behind the girth position. Straighten the neck and then ask for new bend into the change of direction, keeping weight into the inside stirrup. Ask with the outside leg to the girth and ensure that the rider does not lean into the bend. The rein back. This was a new movement to introduce to this young horse and you will see the quarters go slightly right. The rein back is a two-time diagonal movement which helps develop the propelling power of the hocks and encourages the horse to step freely forward from behind. Teach the horse to walk into the halt. Sit tall and slightly back at the same time with a slightly backward pressure of the lower leg. As the first step happens, the rider sits straight and tall with a light seat, allowing the horse's back to come up. The lower leg stays with a light contact, alternating with slight backward pressure. Hand aid softens slightly to allow the horse to stretch forward a little and just before the last step incline the body forward a little and support with the leg to indicate forward. The two horses used in the production of this DVD were Tosca the Fourth who is a seven-year-old mare, Sire Hemingway, out of an Arhorn mare, and Rockefeller, who was a nine-year-old gelding, Sire Marlon.